traditional CAD systems are what we call computer-aided detection. So here, its purpose is really to help radiologists identify subtle findings that might be cancerous. So these act as prompts. They highlight findings, and then it's up to the radiologist to decide whether to dismiss these findings or to say, you know, this bothers me, I'm gonna call the patient back. And these are what we call a little bit more rigid systems that are training on this narrow task. A lot of excitement in this conference is now focused on deep learning models, and these what we call task agnostic. It can really learn from the data. And as well now, we're not just detecting the new term is called computer aided diagnosis. So not only does it identify the abnormality for me, but it tells me the likelihood of malignancy. So really guiding me in trying to figure out how to manage findings I see on a mammogram. Well, you know, it is an area of active research, and part of it is because there is shortage of mammographers in the world. So now we're thinking this is a tool that can give us more information. So there's a couple of things. One is can these AI tools function as a second reader? So um, many places like in Europe have two radiologists, so perhaps you can have this AI model plus the radiologist, you know, uh, evaluate the mammogram. The second idea is then uh, maybe now if we do more studies we can decide which mammograms may be triaged, meaning these AA models make predictions. And if they're predicting that the likelihood of cancer is so low, perhaps these may not need to be needed by radiologists. Certainly this is an early thought. We need to test and validate in many studies, but that is an area that is generating a lot of interest. That's a wonderful question. I think right now what we've been talking about is really um, analysis of a lesion, identifying it, but it turns out there are many things, I call it within the breast, or, uh, breast cancer care continuum. One of the issues with the mammography is that we have dense breast tissue, but it's very qualitative. You know, I may say a man, woman's mammogram is dense today, and tomorrow I'll call it um, not so dense. So just to have us have a little bit more consistency in our results and reproducible of, of the density would be helpful. And that's within the U.S. now. If you have dense breasts, there's lots of supplemental tools that we can use. So this can be enormously helpful in trying to decide the right test for the right woman. Um, and the other big area is also looking at breast cancer risk prediction. Now the idea is looking at the normal mammogram features. Perhaps we can figure out um, is this pattern going to be associated with a higher risk of breast cancer? Does the mammographic pattern predict which woman might be more prone to developing breast cancer? So I think there are many more areas, and that's the other very attractive idea about AI models that you can do many tasks. I mean, so many things that we didn't think could be possible, I think will emerge with all the excitement we're seeing from these conferences.